Did you know that the Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible, is one of the largest and most mysterious manuscripts in the world, allegedly created by a single monk in just one night? On May 7, 1697, a devastating fire broke out at the Trey Cronor Royal Palace in Stockholm. It is said that around 24,000 books and over 1,000 manuscripts were burned to ashes, causing severe damage to the Royal Library. However, there was one book that survived this intense fire because it was thrown out of a window in time. This book was so massive that it even injured a person standing below when it fell. The book in question is the Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible. No one knew how the fire started in the Trey Cronor Royal Palace, but experts believe that the reason could be the Codex Gigas itself. History records that misfortune befell anyone who possessed this book, which is why it is often called the world's most dangerous book. However, more dangerous than the journey of the Codex Gigas is its origin. Our story begins in the early 13th century in the Kingdom of Bohemia, at a place called Podlesis, where there was a Benedictine monastery. Today, this region is part of the Czech Republic. In this monastery lived a monk named Herman the Recluse, who one day broke the monastery's rules, resulting in a sentence of being walled up alive. As Herman begged for mercy, the head monk offered him a deal. If Herman wanted to save his life, he would have to write a book containing all the knowledge of the world in one night, an almost impossible task. But with no other option to save his life, Herman began writing the book. As midnight approached, Herman realized that it was impossible to complete the book in one night. Desperate, he didn't pray to God but instead summoned Lucifer, the devil. Legend has it that Herman called upon Lucifer that night and requested his help in completing the book in exchange for his soul. Lucifer agreed, wrote the book overnight, and handed it to Herman before dawn, taking his soul in return. Herman died soon after. The next morning, when the head monk arrived, he was shocked to find a 160-pound book which is approximately 72 kilograms in front of Herman. The pages were not made of paper but of calfskin and donkey skin. The book was about 36 inches that is 3 feet long and beautifully illustrated. Now before diving into the mysteries within the Codex Gigas, let's take a look at its journey, which is quite fascinating in itself. The historical records in the Codex Gigas end in the year 1222 leading to the assumption that it was completed around that time. The first page of the book contains a note indicating that it originated from the Podlesis Monastery. The same note also mentions that in 1295, the Podlesis Monastery gave the book to the Sedlec Monastery, and that same year, it was sold to the Brevnov Monastery. Later, in 1594, Emperor Rudolf II of Bohemia took the book from the monastery's library and added it to his collection as he was captivated by the devil's portrait on page 577. However, why is this terrifying devil's portrait in the Codex Gigas, and was it created by the devil himself? Some sources suggest that Herman created it to thank the devil for his help. Emperor Rudolf II, who added the Codex Gigas to his collection in Prague, is believed to have fallen victim to its curse. He was dethroned by his younger brother in 1612, and then he died. The Codex Gigas remained in Prague for several more years after Rudolf II's death, but during the Thirty Years' War between 1618 and 1648, the Swedish army looted it and brought it to Sweden. In 1649, it was placed in the Royal Swedish Library in Stockholm, which was part of Queen Christina's personal collection. However, Queen Christina also faced misfortune and was forced to abdicate in 1654, after which she moved to Rome leaving the Codex Gigas behind. In 1697, the incident I mentioned at the beginning of the video occurred, where the Trey Cronor Palace, housing the Royal Library, suffered extensive damage from a fire. However, the Codex Gigas remained unscathed. In 1768, a new Royal Palace was built in Stockholm, and the Codex Gigas, along with the entire library, was transferred there. Finally, in 1876, the Codex Gigas was placed in the National Library of Sweden, where it remains to this day. Although you can see this book in person, it is kept in a closed cover to prevent people from opening it. But why is this book called the Devil's Bible, and what is inside it that makes it so mysterious? The Codex Gigas is called the Devil's Bible because it contains the entire Bible written in Latin, along with many accounts related to Christianity. 
However, it is believed to have been written by the devil, as evidenced by the later pages, which contain formulas related to witchcraft, spells to summon and banish spirits, a Bohemian calendar, and detailed records of Bohemian history. Interestingly, one page of the book contains a map of heaven, but if you look closely, no living creatures are depicted in heaven, which is a disturbing fact. The pages immediately before this map are written in a different style, in capital letters, and span five pages where Herman detailed all his sins and asked for forgiveness. The Devil's Portrait on page 577 also raises many questions. It is generally believed that Herman created it to thank the Devil for his help, but the exact reason remains unclear. The Devil in the portrait is wearing an ermine loincloth, which was only worn by royalty, leading to the interpretation of the Devil as the Prince of Darkness. But did Herman really write it? The pages of this book are beautifully decorated with many illustrations, and the entire text is written in calligraphy. Considering the time, when there were no printing machines, the entire 630-page book had to be written by hand. How is it possible for one person to write it all in one night? This is why experts cannot dismiss the theory of the devil's involvement. However, what guarantees that it was written in one night? Herman could have been working on it his entire life, or it could have been written by many people together. Experts believe that for one person to write such a large book, they would have to work on it continuously for 20 years. But some aspects of this book destroy all these myths. If you carefully examine the pages, you'll notice that the handwriting and ink do not change from the first page to the last. If it had been written by many people, the handwriting would have changed. Even if one person had written it over 20 to 25 years, their handwriting would have changed over time. Simply put, the handwriting you had in the 9th or 10th grade would not be the same today. A person's handwriting changes slightly over time. Astonishingly, there is no error in this book, and every letter is written in exactly the same style throughout, much like a modern printed book. All these factors strengthen the suspicion that it was indeed written by some evil power, as it seems beyond human capabilities. Another strange fact about the Codex Gigas is that the first page contains two Hebrew alphabets, but the rest of the book is entirely in Latin, with no other mention of Hebrew. Does this prove the claim that Herman started writing the book, but the rest was written by Lucifer? There are many other stories associated with the Codex Gigas that will astonish you. For example, in 1858, a caretaker was working late in the library and fell asleep there. He was locked inside when the library was closed for the night. When he woke up, what he saw was terrifying. He claimed that the books were coming off the shelves and flying around, dancing in the air. The Codex Gigas then joined them, coming out of its cover and dancing with the other books. The next morning, the staff found the caretaker hiding under a table, trembling with fear. His mental health deteriorated after that, and he was admitted to a mental asylum. As for the Codex Gigas we see today, it is not in its original form. 10 pages are missing. But where did these pages go? Some believe they were removed because they contained errors, while others think they contained prayers to summon the devil. Some scholars believe these missing pages contain the rules of the Benedictine monastery, but given the size of the book, it's unlikely that so many pages would be filled with just monastery rules. Some conspiracy theories suggest that the pages were lost when the book was thrown out of the window during the 1697 fire. There are also claims that these missing pages contained information about the end of the world. Since we don't have these missing pages today, it's impossible to know what information they contained. However, the fact remains that the Codex Gigas, from the early 13th century to today, has changed hands many times, yet no one has ever tried to copy it. Today, you can see the Codex Gigas in the National Library of Sweden in Stockholm, and you can even find a scanned PDF of it on the internet. However, you will need to know Latin to understand it. So guys, what do you think? Was the Codex Gigas really written by the devil? Or is there an even more mysterious story behind its origin? Let us know in the comments below. Have you ever heard of the Codex Gigas before? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, be sure to like it and share it with your friends.